You ever seen yourself a set of these? You've seen them before. Maybe once on this channel you've seen them before. We're gonna do a stabilizer video today. We're gonna break it down, get my stabilizers initially set up. Tell you a little bit more about these elk shape slash podium archer staves. I'm pretty excited to get them on my bow, try them out, get some reps through them, and bring you guys along. Let's go find MFJJ. Let's go find Dan. I know they're in here somewhere. Josh, you gonna set these up? We're gonna set these up today? Yeah, buddy. Cool. Hey, today, kiddos, we're going to set up Tim's new stabilizer system, and we're going to go over a little bit about how you determine what these should be and why. Come along. <laughs> Do not put that on there. That's Some of the shit you put on there, I'm like, okay. Now I'm feeling creepy. You need not do that. <laughs> Guys, Josh is here to show me how to set up my staves, these fancy podium archer staves that I just kind of picked out, and he thinks that we might switch them around a little bit, but we're gonna bring you along. So tell us the process, Josh, tell us what's going on. Personal preference is by shooting and practicing from what the bow does when you fire it to help determine that. Now, right or wrong, it's how I like to do it. Comment below by how ridiculously wrong I am. I love seeing those, those are fun. <laughs> For first things first, I wanna, I wanna set up how much weight is in the front and the back and the length of the stabilizer. Now, I like to try to reduce the weight as much as possible while still creating a balance which is why Tim's got a longer bar back here than you would originally think. As little weight in the front as possible, and then we're gonna manipulate how long this is or how heavy it is back here to create a balance. First things first, I want you to shoot about three arrows into that little uh, Reinhardt third silhouette elk target sitting in front of us. You got them behind you, right? I'm gonna have no shame on my stabilizer length this year. We're really getting set up for hunting, but before hunting is total archery challenge. If I'm running with a four foot stave, uh, that's cool. TDD. TDD. What uh, whatever works best. Well, I'm not a whole crew here. Josh that's isn't even gonna shoot his bow. That's how yeah, confident yeah. he is. For that? Do you have to pay for that? No. <laughs> okay, cool. So all I'm paying attention to right now, boys and girls, while he fires this, I'm just watching if the bow pitches forward or back after he fires it to give me an idea that there's too much weight in the front or too much weight in the back. Okay, so don't touch the front of your riser, let it go. You're touching it? Oh, okay. So if the bow's pitching this way or that way, I won't see it. Don't touch the bow, let it go which way it wants to go. Okay. Okay, so when you fired your bow, it went like that. Shoot another one. Top of the bow, back. We want the top of the bow to sit stagnant or go forward a little bit. So that would indicate that that's too long or that needs more weight. I like how Josh talks with sound effects. That are going where? He hasn't said Gergen yet. <laughs> Schmerk and Gergen? <laughs> there you go, Tim. Yeah, it's just a little bit, so we probably want to go about two inches shorter on the bar back here. And then we might not need so much weight there. And once we find a balance where it comes forward and doesn't go like that, then we can play with how far out it goes. But if we don't find that point first, the weight's gonna be different here and the length's gonna be different here. So as we turn it out, it would be different overall. So we gotta set that first. So I'm gonna- so That's a 10 incher. So short I think bar. This is a, yeah, I'm gonna go grab you a slightly shorter one. So you hang tight and I'll be right back. Two inches shorter on the rod. Let's give it a whirl. Better. Little tidbit for all you fellers out there. If you're gonna stand at seven feet, you need to shoot like 45 or 50 yards because your arrow's still going up at a given point. So if you stand this close, you're gonna be way lower than you think, which is why Tim was hitting low to begin with. So, continue. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Shoot one more. I think that's gonna be a good length for us and we can start playing with how I would set up your, your left to right position. So either front stand. to back? Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's going forward now. It's not going like this. Well, what a I'm nervous. Yeah, just kind of burr. Does it go burr. So the bow Side physically backs. moves like this. Yeah, like if we put a whole bunch of weight in the front of that, it's gonna do this. Okay. If we put a whole bunch of weight in the back, it's gonna do this. So as far as the risers can For this camera, the bow is Too much weight in the front, does that. Too much weight in the back, does this. Ah, you see, I'm learning stuff. Simple. All right, now that we've roughly got our positionings of how we want them, now I'm gonna do a test on you for how your left to right should sit. This time, this will be a little more scary for you. How I would set the rear stabilizer position as far as how far away from the bow, it's gonna sit. I'm gonna have you draw the bow back with your eyes shut. Yep. In your anchor point, I'm gonna grab your bow and move it all over the place and let go of it. Okay. And then you wait till it settles out and then open it up and tell me what your bubble's doing in your house. Okay. And that'll tell me better which way Just I need to move it. this up? <laughs> I think you made it up on the fly. It makes sense. That's how I've always done it. We're but... gonna try it out. 
That's how I've always done it, but I'm sure, I'm sure somebody smarter and more technical <laughs> and whatnot. Well, I don't need to practice to beat you. Somebody smarter and more technical than me probably has a much more technical way to do this, but this is how I've always done it. So hold on. What did that do? No cheating. Are you back and are you anchored good? Yep. Okay. Okay. Now just stabilize out and get comfortable and then open it up and tell me which way your bubble's going. It's my bubble's tilted left. Tilted left. All yeah. right. So go ahead and line up and fire it or what have you. Whew. Tilted left, we probably need to bring your stabilizer in, not out, which means the bow is relatively balanced. So we're going to have to tuck that back as much as we can to try to get we around that. too much room to go. I know. It's because these things off. are relatively balanced. All right, same drill. Same drill. Same drill. Eyes shut. Yeah, eyes shut. Anchor in, let me know when you're anchored good. I'm good. Now you see. We're level. Imagine that. So in the premise and the purpose of this, go ahead and shoot to me. The premise and the purpose of this is a simple one. How long does it take you to get to where everything's level before you fire the shot? If you can take two seconds off of that or three seconds off that, you're shooting in a shorter period of time, which means there's more, oh, sorry which means there's more oxygen in your system and you will shake less and you will move less. So the sooner you can get to where you can comfortably fire, and I'm not saying rush the shot, I'm saying do your prep work ahead of time so your shot sequence is shorter. We want seven to 11 seconds in a perfect world. If it takes you 15 to 18 seconds, you are oxygen deprived heavily before you fire, which means you're gonna shake, I mean, you're gonna move, you'll get to a point, if you do it a lot, that you'll start to not be able to see. Your vision will start to fade and get a little fuzzy because there's no oxygen in your system because you're holding your breath when you're trying to fire. You're not sitting there breathing in and out. That's why stance is important, that's why body position is important, that's why getting to the target before you draw back is important because the longer it takes you to get to here, then and, okay, now I can start thinking about pulling is another second or two seconds so you're back at full draw more and you're fatiguing faster. If your bow naturally sits level when you pull it back, that's less work to get it level. It does a shorter period of time, shortens the sequence. Everything you can do to do that is gonna make you more accurate more often. That's science, folks. Yeah. If you're arguing with me, you're arguing with science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super level. that simple. Back on your stabilizers, when you're firing your bow, let me have this to me. When you're firing your bow, if your bow goes like this, there's too much weight in the front. If your bow goes like this, there's too much weight in the back. Now this is assuming you have a good hand grip and you're not creating that by a lot of heel pressure, a lot of throat pressure. You want your bow to go forward and maybe uh, like that, just a tiny bit so it doesn't kick back at you. So that's how you determine how much weight for the front, for the back. The shorter you make this with the same amount of weight, the more front you're gonna get. The shorter you make this with the same amount of weight, the more back you're gonna get. So that's what you wanna do to get that ideal weight. And then you move this guy in and out based off of which way your bow sits after you've been fatigued with it. So you gotta draw it back with your eyes shut to where your brain can't try to relevel it. Have somebody move it around on you, move it this way and this way, and then let go. Then try to rebalance, open up and look. If your bubble's in the middle, you're good. If your bubble's, let's see, this way, you need to come in. If your bubble's that way, you need to come out. Quiver on. Wait, how you gonna do it, how you're gonna shoot it. You're gonna shoot this bow with your quiver on, you better have your quiver on, and you better have arrows in it if there's gonna be arrows in it when you're balancing it to hunt. Pretty important. <laughs> and we have an appropriate amount with one pulled. That's a good balance. So this bow is good, balanced, and dialed. Here you go, birdie boy. Almost impossible to miss. Like right. you're right. <laughs> so if you and any of your friends and family have an interest in any of these glorious stabilizers that I made, uh, you can head on over to podiumarcher.com under accessories and you can find these little guys. Or you can head on over to Elk Shape and you can get ones that have a little spiffy little Elk Shake logo on them if you are so inclined. Sure. And if you and your friends struggle with short stabilizer syndrome, <laughs> your stabilizers <laughs> just aren't as long or maybe they have a slight hook to them. Yeah. Head on over. You want a straight stabilizer. You don't want a hook left or a hook no. right. That'll just no. throw everything in the mix. You got to find the perfect situation perfect for that Perfect stabilizer. To work, right? These are perfectly yeah. straight, no hook. Head on over to podiumarcher.com. Thanks, Josh. He's got a YouTube channel. Go check him out. Appreciate you guys. Subscribe to the channel. We got some super fantastic giveaways lined up this year. We're going to shoot this bow, tinker with it, and uh, be subscribed. We'll catch you for the next one. Later.